Shalom. Ain't on yet. Let's see if it's on now. Ain't on yet. Let's see if it's on now. Oh, yeah. We on. All right. <clears throat> My apologies for the late start. Still getting things together, straightening this stuff out. So we're ready to take off and get into this uh this live stream, this lesson here. Just give a few minutes for some brothers and sisters to come in. Oh boy. Back to work tomorrow. <clears throat> all right, so Shalom, all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Okay, Shalom to the hopefully elect brothers and sisters out there. This lesson is entitled Hebrew Israelites. Proverbs 1 will smack most of you in the face. Proverbs 1, in which we're familiar with, that, that verse, that from 20 on down will smack most of you in the face and somebody may say well how do you know that brother well two-thirds are gonna gonna be destroyed and die a lot of you people have heard the truth a lot of people are in the tr truth you know about what we teach you know about the, the mark of the beast you know about all the things we talk about jacob's trouble and yet you think that some type of way your opinion is going to prevail what you want you really just don't believe in you're unbelievers. You don't believe in the prophecies. You don't believe that the, the Lord sent forth men to give the warnings. So that's why you follow all those different groups. You're too busy looking for something that fits you, that make you feel comfortable. This shit ain't about comfort. I don't even want to use the term shit. This ministry is not about comfort. The Lord didn't send us here to make people comfortable. He didn't send us here for you to agree or to disagree. He sent us here to give you a warning. Can, can we get that, brothers? As a matter of fact, I can just uh, bring it up. Let me just bring one up. <clears throat> Let's bring a scripture up. And we're going to, you know, get into a, a couple of videos from this individual. Now, this, this individual that we're going to play videos by, the lesson is not about him. It's about people like him, which most of you Israelites are like that. You think that because if you come on the video and... You hear a message from us and you don't like it and then you go to somebody else and they say something different than we say and you like that better you think that's what's going to prevail the lord only sent one group of prophets and that i'm not saying group as in by name i'm talking about the most i only sent the prophets like of old that all their messages was pretty much the same it wasn't one you know he sent Ezekiel. Ezekiel had 20% of the truth. Then Jeremiah had 20%. Then John the Baptist, when he came, he had another portion. No, they all had the 100% truth. And they came from the Heavenly Father. Whatever he gave them, that was 100%. And all of their testimonies agreed. It's the same thing now. And the brother Shapar, he got it. But I'm going to go ahead and read it. You know, I pulled it up. So that's exactly the right scripture, though. Ezekiel 3:17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. And when you have the warning, there's no back and there's no room there for well, y'all said it too rough. The Lord told us to give you the warning. I don't like go back to the Lord and say you the way you you came and warned me. I didn't like it. I don't like what you got on. You know, you you too rough. No, the warning comes because of what the Lord said. Give you the warning. That's why the warning was sent so that you might be spared. From the wrath of the Lord, your opinion is not important in a warning. And you got a very jokey, you know, simple spirit about you. A lot of the Israelites do. You don't take nothing serious. This is Isaiah 62 and 6. I have set watching upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, who shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, whose name is Yahweh, keep not silence. See, the men that, that were sent by the Lord. They're supposed to never keep silence. You got a lot of dudes that think the most I sent them and they don't even do shit. 
What did the Lord send you for? If you don't do anything, you don't make no videos, you don't got a ministry, you don't got a camp, you don't do anything, but the Lord sent you. What did he send you for exactly? You got people saying they're men of the Lord and you don't do nothing. You don't help the brothers. You don't, you know, I mean, when I say help them, try, you don't donate Bibles. You don't come at, to the camp, the fellas. You don't do nothing. You just watch the videos and then when the time you run, jump on the live stream and post scriptures, that's what you do. That's your contribution. That's it. That's all you're going to do. The Lord, didn't. He, he's not dealing with people like that. Now, he may be dealing with you in your personal walk so you can help, you know, so you woke up to the truth and maybe you'll be saved. But as far as being in the ministry, the, the most High is not dealing with you like that. And if he's not, then you have to you have to be afraid. You have to wonder, is the Lord going to destroy me? Isaiah 62 and 6, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night ye that make mention of the lord keep not silence and give him no rest till he establish until he made jerusalem a praise in the earth so the lord sent watchmen and the watchmen are going to do something and all of them that sent by the lord their testimonies are going to agree they're not going to say something different they're not going to be saying you know something way different now you got one guy he got uh, 10 guys they have an opinion on something but then you got Hundreds of other men, all their testimonies agree with the one that's the 10 dudes <laughs> with, the, with the bad attitudes and the disagreement that the Lord sent them, them 10 guys, and they ain't even doing shit. It's not how the Lord works. This is Magan Ha Ha Amath, Wisdom of Solomon 319. For horrible is the end of the unrighteous generation. And we're in that generation now. A bunch of unrighteous, crooked, perverse Israelites, opinionated. Right, you buck up against the prophets, but it's no different than it's always been. It's always been like that. Jake always rebelled against the leadership, right? You, against the counsel of the Lord, one way or another. Jeremiah caught complete hell with Jake, with Judah. Did he not? And you had the same thing with uh when Elijah was on the scene. You had uh Queen Jezebel, which was the the, the wife of um Ahab, right? She came against uh, uh against um. Uh, Against Elijah, excuse me. I'm talking about to say Jeremiah or Ezekiel. She came against um, Elijah, right? And she had her own counsel. They had their own counsel. They wanted to come against what Jeremiah was doing. See, when King David was on the scene, you had the tribes rebelling then. A bunch of wicked people. So you're going to have it when Moses was on the scene. Korah, Bemaram, and Dathan. So we know that this is, is scriptural, but it doesn't make it any less vexing. So I like this scripture. This is the brother uh, Shapa of the Twelve. Second Esdras 9 22. Let the multitude perish then. The majority of the Israelites are going to perish. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain, and let my grape be kept and my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect. And that opinion, that's the main thing that's going to get Jake. That fucking opinion, the unbelief. But you know, your unbelief is by design. The Lord set it up that way. And it's really, like I said, it's just aggravating to see. Now, I want to read real quick here. Let's read a couple of these, and then uh, we'll go ahead and get into the main thing while we'll play these videos. This is Proverbs 8 and verse 17. See, after, after the Most High send forth the prophets, and they preach, and they teach, and they do all the stuff that they do, then the Lord's going to bring the judgment. You don't get to scoff and mock and go back and forth and play games with the prophets. And then right before the Lord send the judgment, he's going he to, you know, you're going to get it. Then you're going to be able to repent. Then no, the Lord just going to bring the destruction. That's going to be the end. And once we present the, the, the warning to you, when you go and you say you buck up and you talk all your shit. And then one day you have a moment of clarity and you sit down and say, well, you know what? And you want to start asking us questions to being civilized. We don't have to send that with you and be like, well, look, brother, this is really what it means. You know, we ain't going to do all that. Sometimes you get many warnings, but sometimes you might just get one or two. Right? Go back to uh Triple X Tentacion, I guess that's how you say his name. He was there was the brothers was out prophesying, of course, as always. And he had, I don't know how many times he came across the Israelites, but in the flesh, we know he came across the brothers in Hawaii. They was preaching, he didn't have nothing to do with it. Then a month or two later, he was dead. So some people are gonna get many warnings, and others you ain't gonna get that many warnings. Some people got a lot of time. Some don't have that much time. So we can't tell you when that's going to be. That's right. Another good scripture. Shepard 12, Jeremiah 7, 16. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, 
neither lift up a cry for them, Salakia, neither lift up a cry nor a prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. We ain't going to be praying for these wicked Israelites. That whole thing, well, you, that brother Israelite, you can't talk to him like that. Fuck that. The Lord going to do something way worse than us talking. Proverbs 8 and 17, it says, I love them that love me. This is coming right from the Lord. I love them that love me, right? And those that seek me early shall find me. When you try to seek the Lord all late, late in the game, it's too late then. The most high is not going to be listening, right? When the family of the word come, it's too late to be trying to, I want to, I want to hear now, brother. So we're going to play an example. This dude, he made a couple of videos. I'll show them to you. And then first, before we do that, we're going to read Proverbs 1. I'm going to show you, and, and you may have seen this guy already. You may not have seen him. And I'll be easy. <laughs> I'll, I'll be easy by saying this is the face of simplicity right here. But whatever. Right? See, he made videos addressing it to the brother Amawan Abad. This one says, will the mark of the beast be forced on us like the, you know what? Like the, you know, like the, the squid game was forced on us on people and this dude when you listen to him he already knows and admits pretty much that the mark of the beast is the chip but then he'll admit, he'll admit it in one video then the next video he'll come back and say oh that ain't what it is you know and he got all these different doctrines in his brain in his head he just doesn't get it he's quibbling over small things and you got a lot of jakes like that you say well i believe the chip is part of it but that ain't the whole thing or just, you know whatever no it's what the prophets told you that it was but you think that your opinion is, is going to override what the Lord sent us to tell you. No, it's not. If you're going to believe and perhaps be saved or you're going to be destroyed. That's it. That's it. <clears throat> so we're going to get into that video. And he's got two videos like four minutes long. Yeah, you know what? And he even made a video and put, you know, put my, my name in the title too. And that's another thing. Like the brother said. This dude got an obsession with Amawan Abad. But see, that's another that's another spirit. You get certain people that get an obsession with a brother. That's that Stan demon. Remember the song Eminem made called Stan? Stan was a fan of Eminem. He sent him letters and postcards and all this stuff. And then he put it, made his hair just like his. Try to flow like him. Do all that. So you got a lot of guys do that. That, that bugged out King David nigga. <clears throat> that nigga's obsessed with me. They get obsessed with you after you rebuke him. Or whatever, and I'm gonna want to buy the rebuke this dude, and then you become obsessed, and you think you're gonna use that as an, as an excuse to to unbelieve. Well, it ain't got nothing to do with us. We just the messengers. The Lord gave you that role. This is a good one. This is GMS Shema Yam Yamyan, Micah three and four. It says, "Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but He will not hear them. He will even hide His face from them at that time." As they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. That's what it is. Did you behave yourselves ill? It ain't like, see, Jake gonna try to pretend like the most high just he being unfair to them. No, he's not gonna be being unfair to you. He's already sending you warnings. He's already sending you messengers now. You don't like it. You don't want to hear what he got to say. Right? He don't you don't want to hear what the most high got to say through us. So you mock, you scoff, and you play games. But when the Lord ready to bring the hammer down, then you go, well, why are you doing this to us, Lord? No. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I don't know what Jay was talking about. So let's read Proverbs 1, and then we'll start playing some of these, you know, a couple of these dudes' videos. <clears throat> so we're going to start at 1 and 20. And all the brothers, you know, we all read this scripture in camp. It seems like probably every week or every other week or every video that we make, a lot of videos that we make, we go into Proverbs 1. Let's read it now. Proverbs 1 verse 20 because it's in the title. This is going to smack most of the Israelites in the face because you don't like the men that the Lord sent. Verse 20, it says, wisdom cried without. She uttered her voice in the streets. Wisdom is coming out of the men that the Lord sent. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. In the openings of the gates in the city, she uttered her words saying, how long ye simple ones will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. How long are people going to be simple and go against the word and scoff and mock and play games and come and try to freestyle on, on the camera or whatever? How long are you going to do that? When are you going to realize that something more, something bigger than you is going on? And even now you got different Israelites. They'll watch a brother or camp in a particular area. Then they'll go and conspire to steal their spot. They'll go up there 
and be in the spot when you come to teach they in your spot building even though it's a big ass city and there's many other places they could go teach this is what jake is doing because they're trying to they're using the truth for social media likes and fame different shit like that not really realizing what's going on the lord's gonna get rid of all of that verse 23 says turn you at my reproof behold i will pour out my spirit unto you I will make my words known unto you. And this is how most of these little fledgling groups that pop up try to be all deep. You learn because the Lord made his words known unto you by sending men. That's how you learned it. But then you turn around the same dudes you learn from. You will buck up against them and say they ain't, they ain't teach you nothing. When you didn't even know you was an Israelite that long ago. Verse 24 says, because I have called and ye refuse. Who's doing the calling? The Lord is doing the calling. Because I have called and ye refuse. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded, but you have said it not all my counsel. What's the Lord's counsel? The prophets, the men that he sent to warn you. And you've got women that will get proud and then try to instruct the men like like they like you doing something. This girl named April was all on the comment board mad because we because I said that uh, the most High wasn't dealing with Naquam from Watchmen for Israel. She was she was going against what the Lord said by posting scriptures on the comment board, call herself rebuking me. Over a dude that the Lord ain't even dealing with. But she says the Lord dealing with him. That's how crazy this is. But it's all right. The Lord going to do something. And no, no need to even answer back. I just blocked her. But you have said in all, all my counsel and with none of my reproof. And when you have other Israelites that's waxing, waxing wicked and proud. And the men of the Lord sin, sins warns them. They buck up. So this Proverbs 1 and 20 is going to slap a one Proverbs chapter one is going to smack a lot of Israelites right in the face. We're about to get to it now. It says, I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. See, when the Lord sent me, you mock them and laugh at them. By doing that, you you laughing at the Lord. So he says he's going to mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me but i will not answer that's another thing we tell them what the name of the lord is they bickering with us over that like they know telling us that the hebrew we speak ain't the real hebrew and these niggas been you ain't been nowhere but cleveland how you know what the real hebrew is you arguing with us over it you don't you ain't never said the name of the lord your whole life but as soon as you see men that look like you say the name of the lord is yahweh yahweh by hashem yahweh shot and you say no that ain't it. his name god no, that, that can't be it. His name Yahweh or whatever you're saying. Very bizarre, odd individuals out there. And this dude is one of them. How you want us to break something down to you, but then we tell you, we give you the answers. You say that ain't the answer. So why are you asking us questions then? Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. And what does that mean? You think the most I'm going to be missing? He's going to be in a different place in heaven where, you know, no, he's going to be right where he is, but you won't be able to get a connection to him because you you rejected the man that he sent. If I give you a phone to call me, <laughs> you come to me. If I give you a, a particular phone number to call me, you call a different number. How do you think you're going to reach me? If I give you this phone and say, I can only be reached on this phone. And you say, well, I, I know what you said, but I got a different phone. Can I reach you on this? What did I say? You can only reach me on this phone. So the Lord is saying when, when the time comes, the lines are going to be closed. There's no communication now. We're the conduits. The Most High sent us to connect you with, with his son. If you can't get through us to connect to the son, then what are you, what are you thinking? You think, well, I'm a, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a different phone. I'm going to come up with my own number, and I'm going to call the son from that number. Well, it's not going to work. He's not going to answer you. It's not going to work. He's going to know you're trying to call, but it's not going to work because you're not obeying what he told you to do. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. And why is this going to happen? For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Right now, there is no Israelite group that's claiming that they have 100% truth other than GMS. And you think because nobody says it, that means nobody has it. Other than, you know, we don't even have it. What are you talking about? I would be careful of following anybody who didn't say everything I'm telling you is the truth. I don't want to learn from you then. I want to learn from the people that say everything they teach is the truth. That's who I want to learn from. That way I know I'm not getting any errors, no matter how hard it is to take. 
No group is saying they got 100% truth, and they, and they don't have it. They know that they don't. Why are you going to watch them? Why are you going to follow them? Because that's the road you've been given, and the Lord's going to let you do it. Proverbs 1 again, verse 29, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They were none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. And Jake hate reproof. They hate to be reproved. They hate to be corrected. Therefore, for all those reasons, shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. When you got to go your own way and be filled with your own devices, that means when terror and drama come up and the water get off and ain't no lights and all this, you got to figure that out. The Lord ain't going to make a way for you. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely. The Lord ain't going to call you one on one. He doesn't do things that way. He sends men to tell you what to do. And if you don't listen to them, then you ain't hearkening to the Lord. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. So all of that's going to smack you in the face. If you were an Israelite and you ain't listening to the prophets, and most I never dealt with the Israelites on a whole one-on-one. -on -one. He always had counsel that he sent. He always had men that he sent. You think the most I going to do it differently now? He's not. And if you think he's dealing with the people that you watch, then you need to check their works. You need to check and see is what's going on through them. Is that what's in the scriptures? I would say nay. So this is the good news translation, what we just read. Let's read it again. Proverbs 1 and 20 from the GNT. It says, listen, wisdom is calling out in the streets and marketplaces, calling loudly at the city gates and wherever people come together. You hear that? Wherever people are, you hear the Israelites out there, right? Foolish people. How long do you want to be foolish? How long will you enjoy making fun of knowledge? Will you never learn? Listen, when I reprimand you right here listen when i reprimand you i will give you good advice and share my knowledge with you i have been calling you inviting you to come but you would not listen you paid no attention to me you have all ignored you have ignored all my advice and have not been willing to let me correct you so when you get into trouble i will laugh at you i will make fun of you when terror strikes when it comes on you like a storm bringing fierce winds of trouble and you are in pain and misery, then you will call for wisdom, but I will not answer. You may look for me everywhere, but you will not find me. You have never had any use for knowledge and have always refused to obey the Lord. You was in the getting the coffee. Give me, I got bacon soda. Get the coffee pot, brother. You all right? Let's cook this shit up. I got bacon soda. You never look for knowledge. Now the knowledge is here and you got it. You have never had any use for knowledge and have always refused to obey the Lord. You have never wanted my advice or paid any attention when I corrected you. So then you will get what you deserve and your own actions will make you sick. Inexperienced people will die because they reject wisdom. Stupid people are destroyed by their own lack of concern. But whoever listens to me will have security. He will be safe with no reason to be afraid. And this Proverbs 1 and 20, or this Proverbs 1, is going to smack most of you Israelites right in the face. Right in the face. Right in the teeth. See? Shalom, Elder. Elder uh, Jatazak, Jim S. Dallas, Shalom. Jim S. Hagnos, Santa Strophe, Jeremiah 316. And it shall come to pass when you are multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind. Neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done anymore. Right. You ain't going to be safe till we end the kingdom. You ain't safe now and you need security. But Jake is going to do what Jake want to do. So this video, I'm going to have to be real careful about how I play it because he's saying some stuff that I don't want to be heard. Because he talked, you know, he's saying literally, you know, the uh, he's saying C-19, you know what I mean? But I'm going to skip that part. We'll play some of it, and then we'll go to the end, what he says. Just hold on here. I'm trying to make sure I got the right video. Okay. Yeah, I got the right one. So listen to this guy. So, again, this is from Behold the Age of Old, right? And 
Uh, I tell you, sometimes you feel sorry for Jake, but other I mean, you it's kind of like you don't know if to laugh or be mad at the dude or try to help him. You know what I mean? It's like uh, it, it's you, you feel a different a bunch of different things. I mean, the main thing that I feel is anger when I listen to him, but we'll listen a bit here. So he put up a video. He addressed it to uh, GMS Amawana by 144. Will the mark of the beast be forced on us like, you know, you see it right here. So let's see. We're going to play the first minute and five seconds, and then we'll jump to a minute and 14 seconds. So listen up. As I was saying, I was saying, like, what if the, what if, what if the Antichrist, uh, mark of the beast is a man where they say such things such as, you can't work. Um, you can't work if if you don't have the chip. What if they say stuff like, "You can't go shopping for food if you don't have the chip." See, he's repeating what we already told you. We told you that's what it was. See, he's going to admit basically everything that we say is true, but then he's going to say eventually that he don't believe it. But he's telling you it is true right here. That's what it is. The, the, the scripture tells you that. No man might buy or sell save he that had the mark. Why are you repeating that? You make a video just to repeat what we said. Same thing Bishop Nate kind of did. See, this is going to push people into getting it because they're not going to have no other way to provide for their needs. You understand what I'm saying? They ain't going to have no other way to provide for their needs and it only is going to cause people to become vulnerable in getting it. That's the whole point. We've been telling you that. That's the whole point because you're going to be vulnerable. That's how they're going to back you into the corner to get you to take it. But we're telling you before time how you can avoid even being in that. Right? They're going to try to back you into a corner, but with the Lord, you got to repent. Put away your evil deeds and then the Lord will do the rest. But Jake don't want to hear that part. They just want to do how they want to do and still be saved. No, it's not going to work that way. People won't be able to shop. They won't be able to sell. They won't be able to go to the grocery store and get food without having this mark. And yeah, we told you that. What if it's like COVID? I let him say it. Hold on. Let's go to 114. Yeah. So people, a lot of people are going to be getting this mark of the beast. A lot of people is going to be getting it. You know what I mean? A lot of people are going to be getting it. And it only, like, there is no way out of this. That's the point. There's no way out of it. Repentance is the way out. Why is it the issue? What what's, What are you holding back for, man? The people out there, we like I said, the video ain't about this dude, but this opinion, this simplicity, you know, what, what do you even, what, what is the issue? If you know all of that, what's stopping you from just repenting and following the brothers that, that, that told you all of that? Because he wants to go his own way. He wants to call on the name he wants to call on. He wants to do it his way. Listen to more. There's no way out of this, Mark. Because it's going to be at a time where people are going to be vulnerable, desperate, desperate for some rice, desperate for some beans, and they're going to get it. And I was asking, I bet seven seven seven. He said uh, something like in a in a way of saying I'm a fool because I don't know the scriptures. Saying because I said uh, I said something like. What if I would like to get the chip? I would like to get my credit card chipped into my hand so I can make quick money. And um, he was like, I'm a fool because I shouldn't be doing thinking like that. And then he quoted the scripture where it says people are going to be getting it in their forehead. I think he's trying to say that this is a brain chip that people are going to be getting. It's going to be a chip in your forehead, a chip. You understand what I'm saying? Not a mark. But you just got finished admitting in the beginning of the video that you knew what the mark of the beast was. He didn't say it in those exact words, but he said people are going to be taking this chip. 
Now you saying it ain't a chip, it's a mark. See, he's just being rebellious for no damn reason. The brother told him everything right, but he don't want to listen to that. He want to, I don't know, you want to be deep. Listen to him. When you look at the Greek word for mark there, it's a, a sigil. A mark. Not something that is, that's implanted in your brain, people. Then he comes against it and added his own spin to it. That ain't in the scriptures. Don't say nothing about no damn sigil. That's not even in the word. Let's go there. And brothers are saying different stuff. Let me. <laughs> some of this hilarious. <laughs> oh, this is GMS day by day. Isaiah 33 and 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. You got to fear the Lord. And when one of the men that preach and teach tell you something, you can't buck up against it and say, uh-uh, that ain't what that is. I, I believe it's this. The brother told you. And you bucked up. So when we tell you something, you buck up, then you're going to be on your own. Like the like Proverbs 1 said, GMS Hagno Santa Strophe, Jeremiah 422, my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sodish children. And as the Apostle Gabar brings out, sodish means stupid. Is this not stupid? And they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. <laughs> and the other brother said, you need to take that damn wig off. <laughs> they got two fat ass, two fat ass braids with a hat on, on top of the braids. What are you doing? Right. And back up way too close to the screen, way too close to the screen. But like I said, I don't want to try to make it. It's not so much about him. It's that mindset because Jake is hard headed as shit. You don't want to listen to nothing. Here is the most I sent men to tell you this stuff, and then you would still say that ain't what it is. Good Lord. And then, you, you know, you're messing the scripture up. You said it didn't, it's, it's not a chip, it's a sigil or something he said. All you had to do, man, was look up, look it up in the right way. The brother would have probably gladly, he would have gladly told you what it was. Just hold on here. Let me bring this other screen up. Okay, ready. We're going to get back to it, that madness. And Shalom to the elder, bro. Um, I'm Awan Gabar. Shalom, brother. I saw you there. Revelation 13. And a few brothers done videos on this dude. I ain't want to get on the dude and cuss him all out, but this, this attitude is what we want to rebuke. This attitude. GMS Page Master, which is uh, the elder brother, um, Elder Kazak, GMS Mississippi. He wants to be deep and reinvent the wheel. Need to be taught again. Yeah, just... Just humble down and listen. Just humble down and listen. Shalom, GMS, New Jersey. All right, so we have Revelation 13, 16. He said, it's, let's go back and hear what he said again. I'm just going to play the sound. Just hold on, brothers. Not that one. <clears throat> just bear with me here. My computer tripping. Hold on here. All right. <clears throat> I think I got it now. <laughs> Brother says suffocating his brain with a hair hat. <laughs> it's, 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 it's crazy. All right, let's let him say it again. a brain chip that people are going to be getting it's going to be a chip in your a chip you understand what i'm saying not a mark when you look at the greek word for mark there it's a, a sigil a mark not something that's that's implanted in your brain people okay well let's look at it now then because we've been doing this longer than you you're a new guy Let's go to it. Revelation 13, verse 16, right here. And he causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, right? And go to the word mark. And we, the Lord had us do a whole bunch of videos. The apostles and elders first and brothers on down do a whole bunch of videos over the years on this. The word is karagma in the Greek. 
We'll even play it. So you can't say that we're making that up. Strong's G, 5480. Haragma. Haragma. Here, a stamp on a printed mark, right? If you go here, the mark branded upon horses, thing carved, sculpture, graven work. Here, a scratch or etching, i.e. stamp as the badge of servitude or sculptured figure graven mark. Right? And then you go into the root word, Karax, that's the implement to us, the thing that's going to be used to put it in you. See, it's not like a, a literal stamp. It's a damn literal mark. They're going to cut under your flesh. And we've done many lessons on that. But then this dude going to go on to, he going to say a bunch of other weirdo stuff on the next video, which that's the his error for uh, trying to be deep, watching all them different doctrines. Verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. See, he's going to go on to talk about some Nazi tattoos and all this other stuff. See, right now he's admitting, he already admitted in his first video, right, that he, that people are going to be desperate, that they're going to need it and this and that. But he's going to try to undo all that in his next video that we're going to play. I mean, it's, but that's Jake going back and forth over stuff that don't mean anything. Meanwhile, you, the whole understanding, you just basically, uh, you basically are wasting time is what I want to say. You're wasting time. Listen some more. See, they are adding to this mark of the beast idea where it's not even mentioning that in the scripture, in Revelations, where it speaks about it. You're supposed to take what the scriptures say, right, and filter what's going on today through that. It ain't going to tell you in the scriptures they're going to cut under your flesh. They, it ain't going to say that. But this is the classic type of games that Jake plays. They want the scripture to say it exactly. Well, what would be the point of having the Holy Spirit to be able to discern things if everything gonna be spelled out for you like that? And that that sigil shit he said that ain't no that ain't no clearer. Listen again. You understand what I'm saying? So I asked, I bet seven seven seven. I said, "What do you think about it?" And he quoted some scriptures. He gave me the Revelation passage, and I see that the second beast is going to create an image, and through the second beast, he's going to create a mark. Uh, those who who don't have the mark, those who receive the mark are going to be able to buy, sell, and trade. Those who don't have the mark won't be able to buy, sell, and trade. You understand what I'm saying? So it's just going to be a vulnerable time for people when this market of the beast comes out. Now, in the beginning, he said that many people are going to get the chip. He alluded to that's what the mark of the beast was, but then he just said that the brain chip part he don't believe, and now and then he started to tell you that it's not a chip, it's something else. But now he says it is a chip again. Very vulnerable time. You understand what I'm saying? And you know, maybe we can basically find a way out of this because it says that the beast is going to slay those who don't receive the mark and worship the graven image that he's going to set up he's going to behead the people which is crazy so I don't know we got to do more research on this so instead of just listening to the brother into the videos, he got to do more research on it himself. You already don't know what's going on, man. You have no idea. You, you're mixing up all kind of doctrines. He's been part Christianity. He's going to be an antichrist coming. He's going to get a graven image to bow down to. All of that. See, this is what happens when you don't listen to the men that the Lord sent. You go start trying to find all this and, you know, different things to watch. And some of all of it starts to go in your brain and melt together. And then you just more confused than you were in the beginning. So I'm going to be posting more videos on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, about what I think about the Bible and things like this to keep y'all updated. I want to say shalom to Israel, salutations to Yahweh, Most High God, and his beloved son, so he be the Messiah, Yeshua, if he be the Messiah. He even got doubted that. If he, you know, if he's the son of the most high.
Good Lord. But this is Jake. Confused. This is where you wind up. And we know so many Israelites going to wind up confused as hell because you don't want to listen. You don't like the counsel the Lord sent, so you're going to have to try to find your own way. That Proverbs 1 to 20, that one, Proverbs 1, is going to smack you right in the face. Right in the face. Let's get to his other video, and then we'll read some of these scriptures on the comment board. You listen to a dude like this, he's confused, but then he's going to put up more videos on YouTube to go into this. For what? This video is entitled, Did the Mark of the Beast Already Come to Pass? And I've been saying Mark of the Beast. I mean, hell, at this point, they're going to do what they do. Now he's saying it already come to pass. Well, I thought the last video you was, you know, one minute it is the chip. It's not the chip. It ain't the brain chip, but then it is the chip. And maybe we can get out of this. But earlier you said that nobody's going to be able to buy or sell without it. Then you say he's going to be ahead of people for taking it. But then you're saying maybe we can get out of this. Oh, man, you all over the place. Listen to it. A couple of questions for I bet seven seven. Seven. Hold on, brothers. No volume. We'll come right back to it. All right. A couple of questions for I bet seven. Just give me a second here. Let me take this off. All right. We'll try it this way. We get rid of that. Now. Come on, computer. Here we go. Seven, seven, seven. Israelite in Eve and Yahweh and things like that. Regarding revelations, um, whereas I was being sarcastic when I said I, I want to get a chip uh, in my hand as my credit card because I can make easy money. I was being sarcastic. Sarcastic. We know you've been sarcastic, but your sarcasm is not appreciated. Now you want to be our friend again and ask us questions like we gonna, you know, no, you've been warned already. We got all these videos up warning you, but then you taking, you know, you taking pot shots and being sarcastic and playing damn games. Proverbs one gonna slap a lot of Israelites in the face because this is how they do. They've been talking shit all these many years. And then when shit gets serious, or when you get nervous, you think we're gonna stop what we're doing. And we're going to break bread with you. We're going to break everything down. And we already broke down already. It's already in the videos are up now and you won't watch them and won't take notes. You think we're going to stop what we're doing to try to, you know, help your, your, your lost ass. No, we're not going to do that. We did. We made the warnings. We clean, cleanse our hands of your blood. We made the videos go watch them or either don't. Let's listen to some more. But uh considering the whole mark of the beast and what they are about to do if Russia invades you well Russia has invaded Ukraine but if the war continues and they start issuing in this stuff um like I said it's going to be vulnerable y'all people are going to be vulnerable because it's going to be at a time where we're going to need resources so he'll speak with good sense for a minute and then he'll start vomiting all these doctrines that he's been learning. See, right now he's saying, yeah, people going to need resources. And he mentioned Ukraine and Russia, right? You get a little bit of GMS in him, but then in a minute, you're going to start talking about Bishop Nate and all this other stuff. All that wine he's been drinking, I'm, and I'm talking about doctrine, going to start spilling out because he's an he's a old bottle, basically, or a damaged bottle. All that doctrine gonna come spilling out, and hey, he represents a lot of you Israelites. You're gonna be in the same condition, in the same condition. And we're not gonna have what we need to sustain a healthy and balanced life. And people are gonna get this mark of the beast, you know, and things like that out of desperality. They're gonna be desperate. You're making up words, desperality. That's not a word. <laughs> desperality. He, so he's going back to what he was saying at the beginning of the other video. We know people are going to be in desperate times. 
This is why we're telling you that you need the Lord, that no man can save you. But you don't want to hear that. You already know it. He knows he's an Israelite. He know about the truth. And in the next video, he's going to say he know about the names of how and how shall, but he don't like those names. And people are going to get it. And they're going to be following the beast. And the beast is going to be clever. Now, the brother Nathaniel over at IUIC said that the mark of the beast was when Caesar Borgia became leader in Italy. He became the Borgia. And his image was spread throughout South America, whereas white Christians were going around killing non-Christians at the stake for an image. But we didn't see that the mark was issued or put into the my, the hands or foreheads of the people during that time. Whereas they couldn't sell by a trade. Well, the last video you said you didn't think it was going to be something that's going to be put into people's foreheads. Now you do believe it. See, he he's full of spirits. He don't know if he's coming or going. And this is your end result. Confusion. Complete confusion. See that? If it happened in the 1600s, 1700s, and 1800s. Now, there is something called the slave mark, slave mark, where a runaway slave was, they gave a runaway slave a badge. They burned an insignia on a runaway slave's hand. And that insignia was only to mark that the slave was a runaway slave, not that the slave uh, received the mark of the beast from the Antichrist. Now, <laughs> the Antichrist enters the scene and is marked from the slavery and a brand and all of this. See, Bishop Nate, the Antichrist, Caesar Borgia, ruling over Italy, all kind of stuff just pouring out of him. Then you got some people who say such things such as the Jews, when they receive the numbers on their on their hands, on their forearms, on their wrists, those numbers in the concentration camps, it meant that they received the mark of the beast. So could the mark of the beast already have happened? Because we always associate the mark of the beast with something that's going to happen during our time, but... I can, there's instances like with the Jewish Holocaust in in Auschwitz where the Jews were given mark, markings and engravings on their skin and they couldn't buy, sell, or trade unless they had that mark. But you said at the beginning of the video the time that's coming is going to be a desperate time and many people are going to take it. Now you're going all the way back to that saying did it happen already? Which one is it, man? Through. And it was divided by those numbers and separated from among the people with those marks. So why? So I bet 777, why do you think this has to do with something that's going to happen during our time? And not something that's happened already with Hitler. I just don't see how the mark of the beast is something that's going to happen during our time when there's instances that this stuff already has happened. Okay, then. So you don't believe. Why do you care what we think? We already told you what we thought. The brother Amawana Bai told you what we think because we're all one mind, right? He told you the prophecy, the way we break it down, and you said that you didn't see You don't see it. You didn't agree when he told you. You bucked up against it. You came up with all this other stuff. So why are you making videos asking, us, asking our brother what he think? He told you already what he thought. We ain't going to go back and forth with you crazy-ass Jakes, man. Then you got another one here addressed to the brother. Will the mark of the beast be mandate? Why you you just said in this video you you don't believe it? What he said, you should just go away now. Now I'm gonna go. <laughs> Jake is through. Now this right here is one I clicked on a minute ago. We watched the first few minutes of it. Let's let's click on it now, uh, and I'm gonna let you hear what he says in his opening, and then we're gonna be done with him. Come on, video play. L. All right, so this was entitled Salute to GMS South Carolina, Mario Johnson, and other Israelites not mentioned. Listen to this. Oh, boy. What's up, Israel? Uh, 
I'm currently looking at Mario Johnson's video about Yahweh. And I like seeing that people are starting to go back to the worship of Yahweh and not this Yahweh or Yahweh Shai. So many Israelites are pushing this agenda against the name Yahweh when it was the original name of the, of the creator of all things. You know, a lot of them are starting to say that Yahweh is the Edomite creation and that there is no truth to the name being Yahweh and things like that, but they don't show otherwise. They talk about the Lashawan Kodesh, but that's not even original Hebrew. And Jeff A. Benner, which is a uh, uh, Jeff A. Benner is an archaeologist and uh, uh, he studies text. He even said the name was possibly pronounced Yahweh. So I get tired of seeing all these Yahweh and Yahweh Shai Israelites on YouTube. I'm starting to find that there are more people who are sticking to the name of Yahweh as God's name, like Mario Johnson. Even though I do like what people like GMS South Carolina is doing with his information about the truth, I like his videos. They're really good. And um, I'm just learning more and more about the creator of all things and the good things that he does. And, uh, you won't like my videos after the night. <laughs> so you can see, but the main, the main thing is he's saying that Y'all heard what he said about your how and your how was shy, right? He don't like that. So there you go. You got everything you need to know about Jake. And then he got other videos. He just this dude, man, all kind of spirits on him. This is Inky, leader of the Anunnaki, might possibly possible be a early interpretation of Yahweh. Oh Lord. Young thug type beat. Hebrew Israelite. Young Thug did not get 25 years of life. That's bullshit. Uh, 30, 25 years to life. That's bullshit. So this is what I say. We gave him what we had. He rejected it. We don't engage in petty back and forth, right? And like I said, this video ain't about him. It's about that attitude, that mindset that these Israelites have oftentimes. And there are many doing that. And I've seen brothers on the comment board say they made videos on this dude a year ago. So... You know, ignore ignore the shit out of him from now on, man. He already rejected everything. You can keep make, but see, that's the thing that Jake does. He make these little irritating ass videos and put our name and put at us and hashtag, you know, us in the videos and send the videos to us. But you already said you don't agree with what we teach. You don't believe what we said. So why do we need to keep talking? Don't make no videos and send me shit. Don't don't ask me nothing else. We told you already. We got to give you love that the Lord told, you, told us to give you. We gave it to you. You didn't want it. Now you on your own. You and Inky and the rest of the, the Nephilim and the Anunnaki and whoever else, y'all can hang out together. We done. We moving on. If I was y'all brothers, I would waste no time on that dude. I wouldn't even make no videos about him. And the only reason I even showed him is because that's an example. The twisted, confused state that Jake is in. And a lot of you out there like that. You bugged out of your damn minds. You don't know what the fuck is going on. That's why you come and you keep bringing up little small things to argue about because you're not sure. You're not sure of anything. You just know You just know it's today. That's all you know. Neil Apaya, Isaiah 8 and 20, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word is because there is no light in them. That dude don't have no light in him. And he's double-minded as shit. Jim has hopefully let James 1 and 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. One minute he believed it's the end time prophecy. Next minute it's something happened already. But do you believe there's something coming now and then it's going to be a time when people got to take it and they're going to be desperate and they don't have beans and don't have rice? Why are you worried about it if you said it happened already? <sighs> and I wouldn't qualify that as prophesying because he didn't read no scriptures. He never read a scripture. So, you know, it is what it is, man. Like I said, it's just a... That's, he's the backdrop of what a lot of Israelites are going to be. You're going to be confused. You're already confused. We can already see it. Jim S. Hopefully Lick, Revelation 21 and 8. But the fearful and the unbelieving, and that dude is an unbeliever, and the abominable and murderers and the whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, the nuclear destruction. 
and he already scoffed the name of, of our God and his son and our language and us, right? Too many Yahweh and Yahweh Shai Israelites on, on YouTube, right? You see, he said, uh, Lashwan, he said Lashwan Kodesh, but it's Lashwan Kodesh. He said that ain't even original Hebrew. So he'd rather take the devil's word for it. That's what, if you were in charge and you took over people's language and heritage, and you rule the world, you ain't going to tell people that that's the original language. You're going to tell them that your, your version of it is the original. If you know that you, how can you know you're an Israelite and know that you're in captivity, but then, but then still don't understand that your heritage and your way is not going to be known among these people. You still think that some type of way they got the truth of what of all of it, and they and they're gonna give it to you. They didn't hide it. They didn't remove nothing. They didn't try to twist shit. They just left it how it was, and it's up to us to just find it. No, man, these people went far and above to hide all this from us, and we got it back by way of the Holy Spirit. But then you turn around and say, "Well, nope, they had it right." So going forward, when it comes to the MOTB, which is almost like pointless to say it that way now, after you know he's been saying it so much. But going forward with that, how are we going to escape? We're going to escape because of what the Lord is doing, not because of anything that we can do. Revelation 3 and 10, because thou has kept the word of my patience. That's the first step. Keep the word of the most high's patience. Take your ass on the highways and hedges as a man. you so deep. You know the scriptures. You think the Lord dealing with you? Okay, put it to the test. Go out there and see what comes of it. And if you can't do it, close your damn mouth. Put your hand over your mouth. Because thou has kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them to dwell upon the earth. This means during that time, and the hour of temptation is going to be when you face with that choice, face with that decision, right? He said it himself. People are going to be in a, a great period of desperality. Jacob's trouble is going to close in like walls closing in on all sides, and you're going to be backed against that wall. But if you fear the Lord, if you've been doing what he told you to do, you and you rely on that fear of the Lord is going to compel you. It's going gonna, it's gonna to propel you through Jacob's trouble. You're going to get through it. We can't tell you how. We can't tell you it's going to be a great bird. It's going to come out of the heavens. And, you know, like Pegasus with a horse with wings. It's going to cake. You're going to fly, you're going to fly to an island. And on the island going to be juice and berries and Capri Suns, <laughs> all kinds of snacks and, and, and food you can eat. And you're going to be protected until one day the chariot come and say, we can't tell you that shit, man. I mean, we know that ain't going to happen, but however the Lord does it, he's going to do it. He's going to keep us from the hour of temptation because we kept the word of his patience. All the rest of that shit, we don't have time for it. The who, what, when, where, and why, we don't know. We can't tell you that. We, we know who and what is going to save us, but when and when, where, we can't say. So this is now Zechariah 7, and we're going to go to verse 8. It says, and the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother. We're doing that now. We're going through exhaustive efforts to bring you the word of the Lord. We're making videos every day. We're putting out, and we and not that we deserve credit or praise for, because that's what the Lord said we should do. We should put our lives on the back burner of the things that we want to do and put his ministry first. So we're, we're doing that, right? We've shown compassion to these, these people that are Israelites and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. If you say you're Israelite, we ain't imagining evil against you. Only reason we ever get on any Israelites is out of love, out of duty to our nation and to our God. He said, get on you if you're doing wrong. So we try to compare you by teaching you the right way and getting on you a, a little bit. We chastise you. Yeah, we rebuke you and reprove you. Yeah, sure. But if you walk in the right way, we build you up. We help you as best we can. And we learn our own selves in the process by your troubles. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. He just got finished saying, you know, what he said. And all you rebellious Israelites fall in that same category. You might not have made videos and said it on video, but you're doing it in your actions. You're pulling away the shoulder and you're stopping your ears. And you won't hear you going to say the Christians got it right. You calling Gino Jenny, sending him letters, asking him questions. Going on the, the watchman and Deborah. You're going to female Israelites and asking them to break shit down for you. You're going to Israelites with the 501c3 and you telling them they got the truth. You prefer the marches and the debates 
and all them programs and all them fucking gimmicks over to just the plain word of the Lord. Then when you get confused, you don't understand something. Now you want the pure word of the Lord and you want us to take our time to teach it to your confused ass. And we're just not going to do it. We're just not going to do it. Yeah, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. Lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. We got many examples of a wrath coming from the Lord. Killing 120 in one day, 60,000, 70,000 Israelites. It's going to be way worse this time. Therefore, it has come to pass that as he cried and they would not hear. So they cried and I would not hear, said the Lord of hosts. Right. We out there preaching, the, preaching the word loudly on the corners this dude just making videos he said he knows about he liked that people are worshiping he you know he used the name he wanted to use and many people know about the truth they hear about it y'all saw the video over the weekend the camp blessing with people coming up saying they heard about this like they know the truth people walking by y'all the hebrews like right people riding by and cars saying shalom doing all that the knowledge and the awareness of us is out there we can't help the fact that you don't believe or that you don't apply yourselves we just understand that that's the spirit that the Lord put on you. That's your lot. We ain't going to come to the car and drag you out of the car. We don't come to the barber shop while you're getting your haircut. Hey, brother, you see this 12 tribe sign? You an Israelite. We ain't going to do all that. You know where we at. If you want the word, you'll come there. If you don't want the word, you won't come. We just dealing with what the Lord, who the Lord sent. And he didn't send you to come to the camps. If he didn't send you on our comment board, then we know what that means. Therefore, it has come to pass that as he cried and they would not hear, so they cried, and I would not hear, said the Lord of hosts. But I scattered them with the whirlwind among all the nations whom they knew not. Of course, this happened because we're there now. The, thus, the land was desolate after after them that no man passed through nor returned, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. That's why our homeland now lays in waste, right? And devils inhabit it. But not for much longer. Not for much longer. And the brothers got testimony against this dude. We're going to read it. Different brothers got different testimonies against this guy. Shapab the 12 said he was talking smack about GMS over a year ago. He knows, right? He knows what's going on. And he put GMS Amawana Bod in his on his title. See? He got obsessed with one brother for cussing him out. And you know that happens in life. How many brothers had uh a dude that was your enemy when y'all was in, in preschool or kindergarten or first grade? And then when y'all grew up, y'all was tight as shit. That happens sometimes. We rebuke guys and then they stick to the dude. They rebuke him and they hate him the most. Right? Like King David bug out. <laughs> a couple of other guys. I hate that when I was out, but I'm going to get that nigga. You ain't going to get shit. You're going to get destroyed by the Lord. You know? And you, you are Apostle Dahar, Apostle Gabar, Apostle Rhymeblop. Every one of the uh, elder apostles and bishops got their own personal scoffers that hate them the most. Elder Apostle Rakar got a whole bunch of scoffers that hate him. They just, oh, I can't stand that recall. They, they hate him. But that's the spirit that the Lord put on them individuals. It's going to be a testimony against them. That's all it is. It's all it is. The overwhelming thing is this. The truth is what counts. Not how you feel about us. Because we're just, we just messengers. That's what prophets are. Messengers. Jim is hopefully late. Second Corinthians 4 and 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And that dude is completely lost. You've seen it. This is uh GMS Haraka, first Corinthians two and five. That your faith should not that your faith stand should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of the most high. We just men. The power of the Lord is what you should be worried about. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Right, and it goes on. We have we speak the wisdom of the most high in a mystery. Which none of the princes of, the, of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. It goes, that's a that's a beautiful scripture right there. It goes into a lot of things. Things are revealed by the spirit. You worrying about what the world said. It doesn't matter. It's all good. Just like I said, that overall opinion or the way that he is, that's the overall attitude of the Israelites on a whole. That's, you know, they that like if the world don't agree with it, then it ain't true. That's not even what you want. And when it comes to watching all them different people, this is the scripture. Ecclesiastes 6 and 6. Be in peace with many. Nevertheless, even though you at peace with many, have but one counselor of a thousand. 
you got to watch one group. Stick with the one group. Stick with the one teacher that's teaching you. This dude talking about the Antichrist. This nigga talking about Caesar Borgia back when he was in Italy. Right? Then he's calling on the, the name that the world calls on. Beans and rice. A mark. A number on your neck. No, numbers on your hands. All this different stuff. He don't know if he coming or going. Be in peace with many. Nevertheless, have but one council of a thousand. The Antichrist going to jump out. He got a flashlight. He's going to shine the light on you. Then you're going to melt. <laughs> All different kind of shit. You know? Yeah, it's, it's Well, yeah, it's in the scriptures. I think and I feel it's like it's going to get destroyed. They're going to get destroyed. And Lord willing, we're not of that number. That we're not of that number to get destroyed. Because it's two-thirds is a way bigger number than one-third. Is it not? It is. So let's read here second Edges chapter 9. We'll start at verse 1. It says, he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, which is you're seeing it now, then shalt thou well understand that the most high spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. The Lord told us about all of it in the beginning before it ever came to pass. We've been hearing about the mark of the beast. It's, it's in the scriptures, but it's an end time prophecy. You can't go back a hundred years ago and then talk about what happened, you know, what supposedly happened and saying that Hitler had anything to do with the mark of the beast. No, it's for end time prophecy. The end time prophecy. For like as all that is in the world that is made in the world have the beginning and an end and the end is manifest even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and endings and effects and signs and we're seeing so many different wonders effects signs and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby you have believed what and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith. See, so many groups got works, wearing fringes and doing all that, but you don't have faith. You're not going to make it. And so many people say, the Christians say they just have faith and they don't have no works. So you ain't going to make it. Because that if you have faith, it's going to make you do some works. And the works prove you have faith. Right? doing it the right way though because like i said you got a lot of israelites who have works but they don't have faith that's why they have the corner sword they talking about fun and all that shit they think you can you think that you can keep commandments so much to the point where the lord look at that person keeping commandments i'm gonna save them it's all about his election who he chose and picked and they're gonna have works and faith whereby you have believed shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders why, Lord? For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Predestination. Christians don't even hardly believe in it. Then what's going to happen, Lord? Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. That's your friend, behold, what he, behold of old, or whatever his name is, with the th two dookie plats and the fitted hat and the hair hat. That's him. He's abusing the ways of the Lord. So you got to have a lot of audacity. For the Lord to send men, especially to you, no nation has prophets sent right to them coming into your house every day on these computers, on the phones, teaching you lessons. Every question that you can come up with, we, we answered it if it's, if it's scriptural, of course, right? We answered all that stuff through the apostles, elders, elder bishops, and the brothers on down. We're doing lessons every single day. You ain't even got to you ain't even got to do drive through. You getting delivery to your house, hot and ready, a meal from the Lord, and you still got the, the audacity to buck up. You got to be hella proud to do that, man. Hella proud. Going on, it says, "Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments." For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. And when they had loathed my law, while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, 
understood not, but despised it. And the liberty that Jake is speaking of is liberty to fucking smoke weed. They want to take away your liberty. You can smoke weed. It's, it's not a sin. You dummies. You dummies. The same must know after death by pain. In the kingdom, you're going to be embarrassed. You're going to have your head down. Even though it's your kingdom and it's great and it's beautiful and wonderful, you're going to be glad to be there, but you're going to be embarrassed. You're going to be ashamed of yourself. And therefore, be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, who the world is and for whom the world is created. Right? Because we ain't going to pay no more attention to, the, to people like this dude. I'm going to want to buy send me them videos earlier this morning. <laughs> he said, I, I chose to ignore this. And I told him, man, you should ignore that dude. Because it's not about him. Dude. It's just what he's bringing, what he's saying, it don't even make sense, really. It's just another way of saying, uh-uh, I don't want to believe that. I want to do what I want to do. So you can do it. You can do that. And brothers made videos dealing with the issue. I didn't watch none of the videos because I can't hardly, you know, who can, who can listen to him? Who can bother with it? But just that idea, the spirit came with me to go into a lesson about that overall opinion and idea. This is how Jake thinks. Some of them are more articulate than the others, and they may have this stuff together. But overall, it's just unbelief. That's what it is. It's just unbelief, and we've seen it. It's old. It's boring. It's tired. Been there, done that. And we just ain't going to waste time on you. That's all. We're not going to waste time on you. I love these scriptures you brothers got. Jim S. Weston, North Carolina, 2 Timothy 3.13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. This dude is a, is a deceiver. And I don't even think he even really even understands it. He's just, he ain't all there. Shapab the 12, Galatians 6, 16, as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of the most high, right? And not the IOG, Israel of God, but the elect Israelites from Yasharala, right? That group IOG, they bugged out. That dude, uh, and when I looked up Brother Bowie from IOG, that dude told his congregation to take the you-know-what. He's an old dude. He's an old dude. It's all good. Neil Arpaio, Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. You can't take one component out of the scriptures and try to isolate it and say it happened already, even though it's end time prophecy, and then think we're going to be, you know, we're going to still uh, deal with you. No, ain't no brother should. That dude can send questions all day long. Ain't nobody going to answer your questions like that. You've been rejected, man. We moving on until you can. I ain't even gonna say it like that. I was gonna say until you can come up with some with some common sense. No, you've been rejected already. If the Lord saved that fella, it's because what the Lord just wanted to save him. Not because we're gonna deal with him. We ain't gonna pray for you. We ain't gonna do none of that. You had your opportunities. You mocked. You scoffed. You scoffed the name of our God and His Son and our language and our heritage. You on your own. No hard feelings. We don't hate you. We don't want you to die. We ain't gonna answer none of your questions. No brother should even deal with that fella. <laughs> let, let it be. <laughs> Leave it to his own devices. And some people that call your house, you might just look at the phone. You ain't even answering it. You just look at the phone. And therefore, be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, who the world is, and for whom the world is created. We only worried about how the righteous is going to be saved. Then answered I and said, I have said before, and now do speak, and will speak it also hereafter, that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved, like as a wave is greater than a drop. Right. Most Israelites, Proverbs 1 is going to smack them in the face. It's right there. The majority is going, they ain't going to make it. And the Lord said it. So let's read that from the Good News Translation, and that'll be the end. Okay. We don't need to go on with it. Let's go to, yeah. So it was Second Ezra chapter 9 is what it was. Let's go there. If we can. Second Ezra chapter nine from the good news translation. Hmm. Second Ezra chapter nine. I'm going to jump in here around about verse six. It says some people will escape destruction and be saved by their good works or by their faith all of them now you know they changed that 
It said, and. Did it say or? It said, and. Some people will escape destruction and be saved by their good works and by their faith. All of them will survive the dangers I have described and will enjoy the salvation provided in the land that I have set apart from eternity as my own. Set apart from eternity. Then those who have ignored my ways and held them in contempt will be surprised when they find themselves in continual torment. Like that fella, he's going to be in continual torment. This will include all those who ignored me while they were alive, even though they accepted the blessings I gave them. It will include all those who scorned my law during the time they were free to do so, and all those who refused to repent when they still had the chance. The torment they will have to suffer after death will force them to recognize the truth. Therefore, Ezra, you should stop asking questions about how the wicked will be punished. Instead, be concerned about how and when the righteous will be saved. The world was created for them and belongs to them. Right. This world was made for the sake of the elect or the world to come. I said, I must repeat what I said before. The lost far outnumber those who are saved. And it says zero percent. I don't know how that got there. It is like a wave compared with a drop of water. And we know where that came from. And this dude done bucked up against the whole mark of the beast. He, it's almost like he, he broke it down a little bit, then rebelled against it. Crazy. <laughs> Just completely going off, man. <clears throat> Jake's be bugging out. And we ain't going to pray for you out there. You, If you buck up against the counsel that the Lord sent you, and then, see, Jake love to do that. He love to rebel and buck up against who the Lord sent and then try to make friends with you and then try to make a truce. There ain't no fucking truce. I know what you said. I don't believe what you say, but let's still be friends, brother. We don't want to be your friend. If you telling me that I'm lying about what the Lord told us to come tell you, there's no relationship. We can't be friends after that. Neil LaPaya, Jeremiah 7, 16. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up, up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. The Lord said, even if you pray for them, I'm not going to hear you. So we ain't going to waste our time. <laughs> yeah, that Attention seeking. See, attention seeking. It is what it is. That dude can go and fly a kite. We don't care. And all those that think like that, we're going forward with the mission. We're going to prophesy. We're going to talk about the end of the world as we always do. If you can get it, you can get it. If you can't, then just go your way. Don't have time for it. The water, everybody, for listening. All right. Proverbs 1 will smack most of you Israelites in the face. And we see it. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the hopefully elect out there. The water, everybody, for joining in. The brothers for your scriptures. We'll see you soon, Lord willing. All right. Shalom.